Hey guys, welcome back to the Beer Temple. Very happy to be back after my trip back east to Philadelphia for Thanksgiving. Had a great time out there, but I'm very excited to be back so I can put out these shows. We kind of had to slow down a little bit. It was hard to get those episodes up from the East Coast. We managed to get one or two out, but we should be getting back to our normal pace of getting these shows out for you. So, uh, you know, thanks for your patience there. Like I said, I was out in Philly, and I brought back something from there. This isn't a show about Philly, but I just thought this was really cool. For those of you who live in Philly or have been to Philly, you know what an awesome beer scene they have going on there. And I think this is just kind of indicative of how much they have going on there. Uh, this is a free magazine that is, I don't know if it comes out quarterly or, or what, but it's called Philly Beer Scene. And it's just that, you know, kind of better beer stores and bars, restaurants in the area. And this is not just a, a flyer filled with ads. There are articles about importers. There are tasting notes with guest tasters. Uh, there are just a whole bunch of, uh, of stuff going on, a whole article on cider. Um, really, just, just really, really, really cool. Something about Sierra Nevada and Ken Grossman's kid in there. So really like a national overview of of beer, obviously somewhat of a local bent. And, you know, this is kind of something I'm striving for Chicago to get. And if you think you guys have a big beer community where you live, I think this is kind of a bellwether right here. Uh, you know, the Philly Beer Scene Magazine, free. I try to look for the, uh, I kind of shook it to try to get the uh, the subscription little cardboard cutout to, uh, to fall out, but there isn't one. It's just kind of distributed free in local places, so. Just really great. If you're in Philly, pick one of these up. It's a great read. I really think it's on par with any other beer magazine out there, um, paid or unpaid. So just to give you an idea of how good this is. So great times in Philly. I will set that off camera up there. There we go. So we're not talking about Philly. We are talking about South Carolina today. And in particular, we're talking about RJ Rocker which is a brewery from Spartansburg, South Carolina, which is up in the northwest tip of the state, uh, very close to North, uh, North Carolina, as well as Georgia and even Tennessee. It's kind of right there where the state kind of comes to a point and uh, kind of, you know, a little bit off the beaten path for those of us who are just kind of go through South Carolina on our way to and from Florida on family vacations with the dad screaming and us screaming to stop and get fireworks the moment you get to south of the border. So uh, anyway, this is from Spartansburg, like I was saying. And you might notice a theme here. I, I looked up the, the, uh, the history of the brewery and it was founded by a guy who was in the military and did some home brewing before he went into the military, went to the military, served in the first Persian Gulf War, I believe, and then was stationed in Germany and started going all over the country and seeing some of the amazing breweries that they had there and was really inspired to try to do the same thing here in the States. Came back, opened up a brew pub in the late 90s, and then a couple years after that started bottling or, or kegging beer. And it was kind of history after that. They've been up and, and running and they actually just got a brand new facility recently, uh, which is pretty cool. Apparently they heat their water mainly through solar power, which is awesome. Another reoccurring theme with, with craft breweries that are very eco-friendly. Uh, and I think that we all have something that we could you know, look to them for. So I just think it's really cool how again and again you see the roots of homebrew and travel as reasons for people to open up breweries. And I certainly know that, you know, it affects everybody then. You know, this guy travels, comes back, starts brewing beer. I taste it. I really like it. I get into beer. Maybe I start brewing beer. Maybe I get a podcast about beer, something like that. So really cool. And I, I like to hear stories about that. But anyway, this is the RJ uh, Rocker Rock Hopper IPA. Um, not much information about it on the back. I guess it does say it's 90, I take it back. It says it's 90 IBU, uh, 90 minute boil, and nine hop additions. So if you you think triple hop brewed is cool, well, this is triple the triple hop 
brewing. It's it's basically nine additions. Uh, Amarillo and Warrior hops are what they use. Uh, I got that online, but really they just have like a weird little story about this King Rock hopper on the back. And there's a picture of uh, Emperor Penguin with a little scepter with a hop cone on the top. And he's also got like, you know, one of those blinged out Kanye West medallions, but instead of like some weird Egyptian god, it's just a hop cone, which I think is cool. And if Kanye West ever came on stage with one of those, that would be awesome. So let's look, IPA, dark, unfiltered beer. It's kind of got a brownish amber hue to it. Very, very little head. I mean, it's, it's almost still in the bottle. Uh, there's no bottle dating that I noticed um, when I picked it up. So it's really hard to know how fresh this is. I did buy it from a pretty high volume store, so my assumption is that they're turning over their inventory somewhat often. Anyway, let's give it a sniff. Hmm. Okay, again, I'm thinking how long has this beer been sitting around? Uh, not a lot of hop aroma coming off. I'm getting kind of a, a nice fruity malt flavor to it. There is a little bit of hop there that's kind of going with that as well. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, like uh, light citrus and also just kind of bready malt flavors as well. Now, on a older beer, the first thing to go is going to be the hop nose, but you still can certainly get a lot of the hop flavor and, and definitely the bitterness. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Well, it's not too, too old. There's certainly quite a bit of bitterness here. 90 IBU, that's that's about as high as you're gonna get on, um, you know, some say they have a thousand IBU, but much over a hundred, you can't really tell the difference. It's good. Uh, there isn't quite that huge hop aroma and flavor that I was looking for and expecting from this beer, but that might not be the beer's fault. It might just be that it was a little bit old, unfortunately. But there is, uh, I really think this is almost like an imperial English style IPA. So it is a balanced beer. There is some of that um, orangey flavor to it, almost like a bitter orange, as, uh, as well as some nice bready flavor, and then quite a bit of bitterness. Uh, pretty bitter beer. But it's drinkable. It's got a nice scent, if not necessarily a hoppy scent. I'm gonna go 85 with this beer, but with a little asterisk that, you know, this isn't, I, I don't think this is the best showing of this beer. So I will certainly have to try to find these guys again. Unfortunately, you can't get it in Illinois, but they are available in 10 states, pretty much spread out over the eastern half of the country. Uh, they're in Iowa and Missouri, in, ter in terms of their, uh, the farthest west they go, and then quite a bit down south, and even up in Massachusetts and Connecticut, Delaware. So they are around quite a bit. If you see them, take a look. I have heard good things from people who've had their IPAs fresh, so I have to take their word on it that um, you know it's a little bit better than, than what I'm tasting here. But it is what it is. I have to kind of uh, discuss and, and taste the beer in front of me, obviously. So I'm gonna go 85. And that's really about it. Looking forward to some really awesome shows we have coming up. We've got a lot of fun stuff in the month of December for you guys. And if you guys have any questions, as always, shoot me an email. Uh, you can get that from the site craftbeertemple.com or on Facebook. You can just hit me up there. And that's about it. Thanks, guys. And let me try this again. I've got some beer to drink, and hopefully you do too. Cheers.